brutal barracuda, a sniper elite channel. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the difficulty of Sniper Elite 5, but more specifically the authentic difficulty and where I feel the devs went wrong with it. I feel it's very important that the devs understand exactly how we feel about Sniper Elite 5's authentic not being enough of a challenge. Now as much as I would love the devs to add Authentic Plus to Sniper Elite 5 because I do feel it is desperately needed, I think Sniper Elite 5 needs a lot more than just some buffs to the enemy's damage and spotting speeds. But I imagine the bulk of the development team has now moved on to their next project, hopefully Sniper Elite 6, and what we are left with now is just a small team putting out DLC and season passes. So I'm not here to try to convince Rebellion to add Authentic Plus to Sniper Elite 5 because honestly, I don't think we're going to get it. And if we did, I still don't think it would meet our expectations. Sure, Rebellion could increase the damage of the enemies and the spotting speeds and the spotting distances, but I think it's things like how the sniping system has been implemented in the game or how the maps clearly have an enemy limit. We'll talk more about these in a bit. But I think it would take much more work to implement Authentic Plus than it did in Sniper Elite 4. Whereas Sniper Elite 4 was a much more solid game, it was likely pretty easy to implement just some buffs to enemy damage and spotting speeds because that's all it needed. But Sniper Elite 5 needs much more work. But what I am here to do is to try to get the devs to understand what is wrong with Sniper Elite 5's authentic difficulty to prevent it from happening again in Sniper Elite 6. Because the truth of the matter is, whereas Sniper Elite 5 got a lot of things right and I think it's a fantastic game, if I had to pick just one area where Sniper Elite 5 really shit the bed, it would be in the authentic difficulty department. Now I don't have any issue with the other difficulties, nor would I have any real issue with authentic difficulty if there was a harder difficulty in the game to choose from. So in this video I'll be talking a little bit about the current state of Sniper Elite 5's authentic difficulty as well as offering up some suggestions that I think would improve the difficulty in Sniper Elite 6 because I am very much of the opinion that Sniper Elite 5's authentic difficulty is just way too easy and I know there are many many players out there who feel exactly the same way. Now sure, the first time you play Sniper Elite 5 on Authentic Difficulty, it can provide some challenge, of course. But once your map knowledge improves, along with your understanding of the game, it's not long before Sniper Elite 5's Authentic becomes just a walk in the park. A far cry from the Authentic Difficulties we've seen in Sniper Elite 3 and 4, which kept the veterans of the series coming back for more. Unfortunately, Sniper Elite 5's Authentic Difficulty has not managed to do that. If the game is unable to test our ability and create a real challenge, then players are going to get bored very quickly. Now I understand Rebellion want more and more people playing the game, and honestly, so do I. But not at the expense of the veteran Sniper Elite player base. Adding easier difficulties like Civilian is great, because it will allow even more people to play the game. But what you do not want to do is make the hardest difficulty so easy that veterans of the series get bored due to a lack of real challenge. Now before the release of Sniper Elite 5, I made a video of the top 10 things I want to see in Sniper Elite 5. And one of those things was a difficulty harder than Authentic Plus. Because for me, the number one appeal of the Sniper Elite games is the challenge that the hardest difficulties can provide. It gives a real sense of satisfaction and achievement when beating the hardest setting. Unfortunately, whereas Sniper Elite 3's Authentic and Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus really did give us that sense of achievement, Sniper Elite 5's Authentic does not even come close to making me feel as though I've achieved very much at all, because it just isn't up to the standards of previous Authentic difficulties. Because of how much I played Authentic Plus in Sniper Elite 4, I was ready for more of a challenge. But unfortunately, playing Sniper Elite 5 on Authentic sometimes really does feel as though I'm running around on Sniper Elite 4's easier difficulties. Now, in the build up to Sniper Elite 5, Rebellion held a total of 4 Q&A sessions over on their Discord channel. These sessions were great and we got a lot of new information from them. We could send in our questions and have the dev team answer them. One of the questions that was asked was, does Sniper Elite 5 have a difficulty harder than Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus? And this was the response from designer Tom Field. Is there a difficulty mode uh, more further than Authentic Plus? So, uh, good news and bad news. The bad news is there is no Authentic Plus. The good news is that's just because all the stuff from Authentic Plus is now in Authentic. Um, 
we know that you want it nice and difficult so uh all of the all of the things that we would have put in authentic plus we've put in authentic difficulty so that is the level of difficulty that authentic plus was so the official developer stance on sniper elite 5's authentic is that it's just as hard as sniper elite 4's authentic plus all the things that are in Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus are in Sniper Elite 5's Authentic. And hearing that coming directly from the developer and seeing the final product that is Sniper Elite 5's Authentic is a real concern. And it tells me maybe they don't quite understand Authentic difficulty. But how can they not understand their own difficulty, you ask? Well, there's a fair few experienced Sniper Elite devs who have left Rebellion for other projects. And at the same time, a lot of new devs have joined Rebellion with Sniper Elite 5 being their first time working on a Sniper Elite title. And I'm just a little worried that maybe they don't fully understand what the Sniper Elite community has come to expect from its authentic difficulties. Now, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but the dev who gave this response is relatively new at Rebellion. And I'm not saying it was his decision to make authentic as easy as it is, but this is his first time working on a Sniper Elite game, along with a good few others of the Sniper Elite 5 design team. And I'm just worried that this lack of Sniper Elite experience could damage the series in the long run if little by little the game starts to lose its soul. And having the dev say, we know you want it nice and difficult, and then having Sniper Elite 5 authentic difficulty being so easy is very worrying, and we really need to address it and nip it in the bud now, because this is a very important issue, and has kind of not spoiled Sniper Elite 5, but certainly prevented it from being as good as it could and should have been. Now, I did a poll recently on the channel asking what everybody thought of Sniper Elite 5's authentic difficulty when compared to Sniper Elite 4's authentic difficulty. I wanted to basically see how many people agree or disagree with what the developers said about Sniper Elite 5 authentic being just as hard as Sniper Elite 4's authentic plus. And the results didn't really surprise me at all, with 80% of people saying that Sniper Elite 5's Authentic is easier than Sniper Elite 4's Authentic, let alone Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, which the devs claim is just as hard as Sniper Elite 5's Authentic. The devs need to understand just how important the hardest difficulties are to a large portion of the player base. Casual gamers will come and go, many will play the campaign, finish it and move on to the next game. But it's the hardcore veterans of the series who stick around and play for hundreds if not thousands of hours that Rebellion need to consider. And if this game isn't challenging us, then there is no reason for us to keep coming back for more. So I really hope the Sniper Elite devs see this video and understand that Sniper Elite 6 really needs to have a proper hardcore difficulty that can really challenge even the most experienced of Sniper Elite players so we have a reason to keep playing much like the authentic difficulties of Sniper Elite 3 and 4. And with that in mind, I have a few suggestions here that will go a long way to making the game much more challenging. But before I get on to my suggestions, I have a call to arms for everybody watching. We need to show Rebellion just how important it is that they get authentic difficulty right in Sniper Elite 6. Now, if the developers see this video, you can bet your ass that they'll be checking out the comments section. So make sure you get down there and let Rebellion know exactly what you expect from your authentic difficulty. If you think Sniper Elite 5's authentic is way too easy, let them know. If you have any suggestions that you think will improve the difficulty, leave it in the comments. If you want more of a challenge than Sniper Elite 4's authentic plus, you know what to do. Now, with that out of the way, here are a few suggestions that I think will go a long way to making Sniper Elite 6's authentic difficulty the best it can possibly be. First up, and one of the main reasons an authentic plus in Sniper Elite 5 would require a lot more work to get it anywhere near Sniper Elite 4's authentic plus level of difficulty, is to return the sniping to the way it was in every single previous Sniper Elite game. The sniping system in Sniper Elite 5 makes long range sniping way too easy. And with anything that is too easy, there comes no real sense of achievement. Now those who are new to Sniper Elite may not know what I'm talking about, but right now Sniper Elite 5's sniping system holds your hand way too much and really needs to revert back to the original way of sniping. Back when the wind indicator was just that, a visual indication as to the strength of the wind. You then had to work out how much that would affect your bullet based on your muzzle velocity. In Sniper Elite 5, the wind strength will change depending on the muzzle velocity of your rifle. If you're using a powerful rifle like the Springfield, then there will be very little wind. If you're using a lower muzzle velocity rifle like the DL Carbine, you will notice there is much more wind. 
This is because the wind indicator in Sniper Elite 5 isn't actually a wind indicator at all. It's just an aim assist telling you exactly how much compensation is needed. Simply line up the wind indicator over the enemy and you know you will hit. So it's an aim assist. An aim assist on authentic, no less. And if that wasn't bad enough, it's an aim assist on authentic that you cannot even switch off. I mean, that alone tells you all you need to know about the devs not properly understanding authentic difficulty. And that isn't the only aim assist on authentic that we cannot turn off. No, now the scope adjustment also has an aim assist. Do you remember in Sniper Elite 4 when you had to take out your binoculars to get a distance reading on the enemy before adjusting your scope? And then you'd have to figure out how far above your target to aim to compensate for bullet drop? Yeah? Well that was too much like hard work apparently. So now the scope adjustment works exactly the same as the wind gauge. Just line up the scope adjustment marker over the enemy and you know you will hit. And the dumbest thing of all is the wind gauge assist and the scope adjustment assist combined is exactly what the standard aim assist is anyway. It's insane to me that on the hardest difficulty we cannot turn off the aim assist. Sure it doesn't tell us the exact spot where the bullet will land, but it does show us exactly where to aim. Why let us figure anything out for ourselves when we can just have the game tell us exactly where to aim? One of the main strengths of Sniper Elite has always been the sniping on the harder difficulties. The amount of satisfaction to be had from nailing a 300 meter long shot on Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus was insane. Nailing a 300 meter shot in Sniper Elite 5 is business as usual, easy and in no way exciting. It honestly blows my mind that this decision made it past the design stage. So get rid of this new sniping system that was implemented in Sniper Elite 5 and return to the classic proper Sniper Elite way of sniping. This is a perfect example of how the game is catering more to casual players and forgetting about its hardcore player base. Now again, I'm all for new people playing the game. I think it's important to get new players into the series. Now, the new sniping system that's in place would not be a problem if, if, there was an authentic plus option that gave us the classic Sniper Elite sniping system. Next, the audible range of weapons in Sniper Elite 5 needs some serious reworking on authentic difficulty. Currently, the suppressors and subsonic ammo are way too powerful. On Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, the Whirlwad, for example, had an audible range of 45 meters and could not have subsonic ammo equipped. But in Sniper Elite 5, we can get the Whirlwad's audible range down to a ridiculous 7 meters, or 4 meters, if we combine it with subsonic ammo. That's a decrease of over 90% from Sniper Elite 4's Whirlwad audible range. Now, I'm not being funny, but 4 meter audible range on Authentic is stupid. It might as well just be completely silent. Now, if we take a look at the Delisle carbines, the Sniper Elite 4 version, which could not have subsonic ammo equipped, had an audible range of 70.5 meters. Sniper Elite 5 Delisle carbine, as standard, has a 14 meter audible range. That's a decrease of over 80%. But with a little customization and some subsonic ammo, we can get that even lower down to a ridiculously quiet 3 meters. That's a decrease of over 95% compared to Sniper Elite 4's Delisle Carbine audible range. And again, it might as well just be silent. And that's not all. In Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, subsonic ammo would bring the audible range of all rifles down from 100 meters to 70.5 meters. That is the lowest any rifle in the game would go. That's a decrease of 29.5% in Sniper Elite 4. But in Sniper Elite 5, if we use the Springfield as an example, because all the guns have different audible ranges, the audible range as standard is 135 meters. But with subsonic ammo equipped, we can reduce the audible range 
down to 40 meters, which is a decrease of over 70%. And that's before we even stick a suppressor on it, which is over double the decrease of Sniper Elite 4 subsonic ammo noise reduction. If we then paired that Springfield and subsonic ammo with a suppressor, we can then lower the audible range even further, from 135 meters as standard to an insanely quiet 18 meters, which is a reduction of 86%, which is insanity. Again, on the easier difficulties, it's absolutely fine, but on authentic, it's just ridiculous. So, as you can see, the difference in audible range from Sniper Elite 4 to Sniper Elite 5 is vast and just makes the whole thing so easy. It's night and day when compared to Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus. So, what to do about it? Well, I think a good start would be to have the suppressors and subsonic ammo give diminishing returns as the difficulty increases. So maybe the suppressors give 70% noise reduction on civilian, 60% noise reduction on easy, 50% on medium, 40% on hard, and finally 30% noise reduction on authentic. So the higher the difficulty, the more likely you are to be heard, and the more careful you have to be. Another option that could be implemented that I've seen used in other games is where suppressors have durability and eventually wear out and stop working. The more wear the suppressor has sustained, the less effective it will be before eventually breaking altogether. Personally, I think the suppressors should be accurate for World War II, so keep the well rod, the HDM, the Delal carbine, and whatever other guns there were that actually had suppressors, but remove the suppressors from all the other guns. Suppressors in Sniper Elite 5 are very powerful, and most should be removed, and subsonic ammo is even more powerful and should be nerfed into oblivion. Keep it all the same for the easier difficulties, that's absolutely fine. But on authentic difficulty, it needs some serious changes. And speaking of audible range, the audible range in Sniper Elite 5 really needs to work correctly, as I've had many occasions where enemies should have heard my shot, but didn't. My rifles have an audible range of over 100 metres, and I've had enemies that are 70 or so metres away, maybe even less, and they don't hear the shot. So in Sniper Elite 6, the audible range of the guns really needs to work correctly and any enemies within that distance must react every time. It's already way too easy as it is without having enemies that should hear my shot not be able to. In Sniper Elite 4, it seemed to work perfect, although I will admit it was much simpler with all the rifles having the exact same audible range, but still, at least it worked correctly. It can make Sniper Elite 5's already easy authentic difficulty even easier. So yeah. There's lots of work that needs to be done regarding audible range to bring it anywhere near Authentic Plus's level of difficulty. Okay, next up, Special Ammo. So Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus had subsonic ammo for rifles and pistols, which only lowered the audible range of your weapon by a small amount, and was fairly hard to come by. Now though, we have five special ammos that can be used on every gun in the game. Soft point ammo so our guns can do more damage, match ammo so our guns are less affected by bullet drop and wind, and what of the subsonic ammo being so OP now, I think disabling special ammo on the hardest difficulty would be a good idea. Either that or have diminishing returns on the effectiveness of these special ammos with each difficulty increase. And we also need to significantly reduce the amount of special ammo that can be found around the map on authentic difficulty. And that brings us nicely onto my next point, so let's talk a little more about supplies. So I've always felt that supplies that are found around the map on authentic difficulty are really no different to the supplies found around the map on civilian difficulty. And the same goes for any supplies found on dead soldiers. But if we look through the difficulty settings, we can see this ammo and searching setting, which according to the description controls how many items and how much ammo you find when searching. So surely they must be different. You must find more supplies as the difficulty gets easier. Now, I wasn't convinced that it makes any difference, so naturally, I did some testing to find out for sure. So I went on to Mission 2, Occupied Residence, on Civilian Difficulty, and checked all the supplies in and around four areas. The farmhouse, the machine gun nests, the stables, and the stables armoury. And these were all the supplies that I found on Civilian Difficulty. So, as you can see, on civilian difficulty there are plenty of supplies, and this is just in a small area of the map. I then did it all again exactly the same, only this time on authentic difficulty, and this is what I found. So, as you can see, the supplies found around the map on authentic difficulty are exactly the same 
as those found on civilian difficulty. But I wasn't content with just these results, so I decided to dig a little deeper. So first I wanted to see how much ammo could be taken from the weapons of killed enemies. So, I only came across enemies using a total of three different weapons during my test. The MP40, which on civilian difficulty gave 32 ammo. The Car 98, which gave 5 ammo. And the Luger, which gave 8 ammo. And after testing on Authentic, I can confirm that the results, again, are exactly the same. Next, I checked what supplies I could find by searching dead bodies. So this is what I found on all the dead bodies in these four areas, which came to a total of 17. Now I knew this would be different because the supplies you find when searching dead bodies is random. But I wanted to have a look anyway just to see how different it would be, and these were the results. Now obviously there's a difference as it's all random. Civilian got more traps, but surprisingly during my test didn't receive any SMG ammo. Whereas Authentic, on the other hand, got less traps, but got almost 100 SMG rounds. Next, I checked the contents of the supply pouches, and this is what I found on Civilian Difficulty, and then this is what I found on Authentic Difficulty. Finally, I then went ahead and looted all of the ammo from the guns that I found around the world. Not the ones that were dropped by enemies, but the ones that were placed there by the developers, of which there are a total of 12. The only difference with these guns were four of the six that I found in the armory and only a slight difference at that. But overall, it's clear to see that there's very little difference in the amount of supplies that are found on civilian difficulty or authentic difficulty. So this ammo and search setting is pretty pointless if you ask me. It doesn't seem to do very much at all. I truly feel as though the amount of supplies that are found around the map and on enemy soldiers should become more scarce as the difficulty increases. Limiting the amount of supplies would be a great way to increase the difficulty because at the moment there's just so many supplies to be found around the map that we rarely run out of anything. Another thing that I would love to see which would not only increase the difficulty but improve the game as a whole was if the supplies that are placed around the map were random. So every time we start a new mission different supplies would be in different places. At the moment, it doesn't take long to learn which supplies are located where. If every time we restarted the mission, the game not only randomised the supplies on the map, so where there was once a medikit, there might now be a grenade, but also randomised the location of the supplies. So where there might have been a medikit before, there's nothing this time. But in a house you searched before, which was empty, might have supplies in it this time. This would help increase the difficulty because players would no longer be able to rely on map knowledge. No longer can players who have run out of medical supplies be like, no problem, I know there's a medikit over here, because it would all be randomised. This would go a very long way to improving replayability and would encourage players to always explore the map every time they play because they would never know what they're going to find wherever they go. And whilst we're on the topic of randomness, it would be great to see a certain amount of randomness to certain objectives. Imagine if the free snipers on Liberation guarding the bridge weren't always in the exact same spot. Imagine if there was, I don't know, 10 possible locations where those free snipers could spawn when restarting the mission. Every time we replay the mission, it would always be different, making the game harder and greatly improving replayability. The same could be said for the free snipers guarding the town on Conqueror, or the free pilots on Rough Landing, or the free antiques we need to recover on Occupied Residence, so we don't always know exactly where to go every time we replay the mission because the game would randomise their location. Randomising supplies and objectives would increase difficulty, greatly increase replayability and increase the need to explore the maps more. But if there is one thing that really needs to be randomised, it's the enemies. Take for example this AA gun area on Atlantic Wall. Those of us who play the campaign over and over again know full well there's one guy walking around down the bottom, two guys on the MG42 and three guys walking around the top. Every single time we play, it's the exact same. And knowing where the enemies are all the time really does make things easy. But imagine, if you will, there are multiple possible enemy layouts for each area on the map. This would increase difficulty because we would never know how many enemies there are, or indeed where they are, and it would also greatly increase replayability, as the mission would always be different. And that brings us nicely on to enemies. Now enemies are probably the easiest thing in the game to make harder as far as increasing their damage and spotting speed goes, which should all be increased, especially damage. Here you can see exactly what I mean. In Sniper Elite 5 you can take an absolute pounding. 
In this example, I'm seeing how many times an officer can hit me before I die. In Sniper Elite 5's Authentic, I can take a total of 10 shots before this officer kills me, compared to Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, where the officer can kill me in just 4 shots. And it's the same here with normal infantry. Just look at how much more of a beating Carl can take on Sniper Elite 5 compared to Sniper Elite 4. Enemies in Sniper Elite 5's Authentic need to be doing much more damage to be anywhere near the levels of Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus. But what the enemies really need is an AI overhaul. Let's be perfectly honest, the AI in Sniper Elite 5 is not great. Enemies will leave trenches and sit out in the open when they hear sniper shots. They will leave their motorcycle sidecar where they're already holding a mounted machine gun just to get out and shoot us with their SMG. They will keep running through the same doorway even when every single enemy before them who has run through it has been killed. What we need is the enemy to apply proper tactics. If there's multiple bodies in a doorway, enemies shouldn't keep trying to run through it. They should find another way in or even just wait for the allied player to leave. Officers in Sniper Elite 4 would increase the effectiveness of soldiers around him. Now honestly, I'm unsure if this is even the case in Sniper Elite 5, but if it is the case, then it isn't very noticeable. If officers really do improve infantry effectiveness, then they should stay hidden and in cover, because the longer they survive, then the longer the boost to the infantry's effectiveness will last. Taking out the officer should be a valid tactic to reduce the effectiveness of the surrounding infantry, and taking him out should be harder than taking out normal infantry, but it isn't because the officer will just leave cover and run around with the rest of his men. Keep the officer hidden, make it hard for us to take him out, and make him really boost the infantry with better accuracy, faster spotting speeds, and proper tactics like flanking and laying down suppressive fire, and not just standing about in the open when they know there's a sniper about. And whilst we're at it, bring back spotters and radio men from Sniper Elite 4. They were a great addition. Spotters could launch artillery strikes, which were fantastic from stopping Carl from getting too comfortable in one spot and would force him to keep moving. Radio men were a constant threat and could call in reinforcements from anywhere on the map. They didn't need to be in a certain place where there is an alarm, like in Sniper Elite 5. Damn. The Germans are sending reinforcements. Now, I'm not saying the alarm system in Sniper Elite 5 is bad, but why not have it alongside radio men instead of replacing them? Having officers who can boost the effectiveness of all infantry around him, spotters who can launch artillery strikes on your location, and radio men who can call in reinforcements without the need of an alarm gives us an important choice in who to take out first. And let's not forget about the snipers, of which there should be more on the maps, and they should have multiple areas where they could spawn, so we have to search for them every time we replay the mission, instead of knowing exactly where they are. And for the love of God, sort out the scope glint on Authentic. Sniper Elite 3 did it best. The occasional glint here and there made locating snipers harder, unlike the constant flashlight effect that we have now, which basically shows you exactly where they are. You can't hide snipers when they have a torch mounted to their scope. It just gives away their position and makes them much less of a threat. I also think there should be traps to look out for and a fuse in areas that are occupied by snipers. This will come in very useful. And give the soldiers more movement options. Soldiers in Sniper Elite 3 would move around crouched when alerted, properly climb up ledges without needing ladders, snipers would lay down making them harder to hit. I'd even like to see certain soldiers be able to climb just like Carl can. Having soldiers climbing up buildings and jumping in through windows, that would be fantastic. And make the enemies much more aggressive on authentic difficulty, similar to what we see in survival. Alerted enemies that would advance on your position with speed would have been much better and made things much harder. There really is so much that could be done in regards to making the enemies much more of a threat. Next up, give us more enemies on the map. Not just soldiers, but vehicles as well because many of the maps in Sniper Elite 5 are very underpopulated. Now this is another reason why implementing any kind of meaningful Authentic Plus in Sniper Elite 5 would be difficult, because I've heard from a reliable source that one of the reasons why we don't get more enemies on the map is because the game is being held back by old gen systems. Rebellion wanted to release the game on PS4 and Xbox One as well as next gen, and I can fully appreciate why. 
There's a hell of a lot of sales that they would miss out on if they didn't release the game on those older systems. But one thing Rebellion would really need to do in order to make a worthwhile Authentic Plus would be to populate the maps more. But unfortunately, it seems Rebellion would struggle to get that to work on old gen systems. For Sniper Elite 6, with any luck, it will be next gen only, in which case I very much expect to see the maps absolutely packed with enemies. Another thing that would go a long way to improving the difficulty is having what reinforcements arrive when the alarm goes off be dependent on what difficulty you are on. If you are playing on easy, maybe have just a truck with a few soldiers turn up. Playing on hard, have a couple of trucks with some infantry and Jaegers turning up. Playing on the hardest difficulty, send in the trucks full of Jaegers. Send in the tanks and the snipers. At the moment, a lot of us playing on Authentic are letting enemies sound the alarm on purpose just to make it more interesting because Authentic is just too easy. The alarm and reinforcement system should be a real threat that we have to try our best to stop being activated. One more thing I want to mention about enemies is that the enemies on Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, once alerted, they will continue to search for you for the rest of the mission. They will never stop looking for you once alerted. But not only that, as the alerted enemies wander off around the map searching for you, any other enemies that they come within a certain range of will then start searching for you as well. And then any enemies that they come into range of will then start searching for you again, and so on, until eventually everybody on the map will eventually be searching for you. On Sniper Elite 5's Authentic, once you fire a shot, the enemies will hide for about 30 seconds, search for about a minute, then go back to doing what they were doing. Having the enemies never stop searching for you certainly makes things much more difficult. Okay guys, we are nearly there. This video is proving to be longer than I anticipated. Um, but next, let's talk about skills. Now, certain skills like triangulation and advanced triangulation are disabled in Authentic, which is good, but that's only because tagging is disabled in Authentic anyway. The same with all three focus skills being disabled because, thank the Lord, focus is also disabled in Authentic. But there are certain skills that still remain that make Sniper Elite 5's Authentic still just way too easy. More specifically, back in the fight which allows us to revive ourselves when incapacitated using a medipack. Having this skill available in Sniper Elite 5's Authentic and saying we are still getting the same challenge as Authentic Plus is an insult. Not only that, but we can make Authentic even easier with the Combat Medic skill, which essentially lets us revive ourselves using a single bandage. If they wanted back in the fight to be in Authentic, they should have at the very least disabled the Combat Medic skill. If anyone out there is looking to make Sniper Elite 5's Authentic more of a challenge, head into the custom settings, go all the way to the bottom and turn the skills off. This is certainly what Rebellion should and could still do if they add an Authentic Plus. All the skills do is make the game even easier and they should definitely be deactivated on the hardest difficulty. A couple more things I would love to see from an Authentic Plus in Sniper Elite 6 is making all optional objectives mandatory. Having to complete 100% of objectives before you're able to complete the mission I think would be a great way to make things more difficult. And finally, saving the best till last, one thing that I really do want to see make a return is from Sniper Elite 3's Authentic Difficulty, which is arguably the toughest challenge a sniper can face in the whole series. And one of the reasons I keep going back to Sniper Elite 3, and that is because you cannot save your game mid-mission. And there are no checkpoints. So when you die, you must restart from the beginning of the mission. This is one of my favourite things about Sniper Elite 3. And it makes for a great challenge. I really hope Rebellion consider bringing this back for Sniper Elite 6's hardest difficulty. The feeling of finishing a tough mission with only one life on the hardest difficulty is truly a glorious moment. Anyway, I think I'm going to stop here now. I mean, I could go on forever about how Sniper Elite 5's Authentic is nothing like Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, but I think, at least I hope, I've managed to get the message across. Now, I just want to be perfectly clear once again, this is not a campaign of mine to make the easier difficulties harder. Rebellion can keep the easier difficulties exactly as they are. That's fine with me. All I'm interested in is bringing back the difficulty of the previous games so that the veterans of the series have a reason to keep coming back for more. Because currently we have to go back to Sniper Elite 3 and Sniper Elite 4 if we want a real challenge. But now it's your turn. 
If you agree that Sniper Elite 5's Authentic is too easy and you want more of a challenge akin to Sniper Elite 3's Authentic or Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, get down in the comments and express exactly how you feel and then share the hell out of this video. Tweet it to Rebellion, share it on their Discord, spread the word so we can get Rebellion to understand exactly what we expect from Sniper Elite's hardest difficulty. The more noise we make, the greater the chance we have of them listening. Because regardless of what the devs may think of Sniper Elite 5's authentic difficulty, the truth of it is, it is nothing like Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus. And I am very concerned that what with the new sniping system that they've put in place, and how the developers themselves feel about Sniper Elite 5's authentic difficulty being the same as Sniper Elite 4's Authentic Plus, the series could be on a slippery slope and is at risk of slowly losing the very essence of what makes Sniper Elite such a fantastic game. Okay guys, thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to support the channel, don't forget to give the video a like. It really does help the channel to grow. This is a dedicated Sniper Elite channel, so hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date on all things Sniper Elite. And if you want to show even more support, you might want to consider hitting the join button and becoming a member of the channel and joining the ranks of my elite spotters here at the end of each video. Either way, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video! Brutal Barracuda, a Sniper Elite channel.